those of you who like to count things, to, you know, you'll notice this says lesson five. We did lesson three. I skipped lesson four, and I don't think I'm going to bother. I got to cut corners somewhere because there's so much neat stuff I want to teach you. And unfortunately, Flex took a lot of class time away. I don't mind Flex, but I'm jealous of the class time that I used to have because I could try and inspire you a bit more. Today, we're going to talk about calculating percentage error. Often when completing a lab, we would like to know the accuracy or the validity of our results. How close are we? If we have a known value, the quote, correct value, to compare our lab results to, we can find our error and then our percentage error. We can find our error, oh, I was off by 19 grams, and then I can figure out what percent I was off by. Oh, that 19 grams ended up, I was actually only off by 3%, which would be pretty good. I was off by 84%, which, believe it or not, with some of our equipment will also be pretty good because we've got lousy equipment. To calculate the error, you take the theoretical value or calculated value. This is your lab value, what you measured. And you subtract the known value, except sometimes that might give you a negative answer because you might end up going a smaller number minus a bigger number. And so we have these vertical bars on either side. Who has seen these before in math, that right there? Do you remember what we call it? It's called the absolute value. And basically it means if you get a negative answer, make it are you positive? <laughs> See, I did that. So we're going to do some math in our heads. What's the absolute value of 5, everybody? Everybody? What's the absolute value of 8, everybody? 8. What's the absolute value of negative 5? Five. 5. What's the absolute value of negative 8? 8. eight. Uh, and that explains some of you have a calculator that has an ABS button on it. Or it's somewhere in the sub menu somewhere. You all do have an actual absolute value function. So take the positive answer or just always go bigger minus smaller. Even though I wrote lab value minus known value, you could go known value minus lab value if it was bigger. Okay. So the known or accepted value is often the correct value, the one that you were supposed to be trying to get. So the absolute value makes your answer positive, even if it's negative. In other words, just go bigger minus smaller. Then to turn that into a percent, you take this answer right here and you divide it by the correct answer, the one that you know is right. Just like uh, if you're trying to figure out your percent on a test, you would say, I got tests out of 60, I got 43 out of 60, I would go 43, the test divided by the goal or correct answer, 60, and then times 100 to make it a percentage. It's the same math. It's the same math. For example, a police officer uses a radar gun to clock a passing Ferrari at 211 kilometers per hour. But the GPS on the Ferrari was really speeding at 199 kilometers per hour. The radar gun is off. Calculate the error in the officer's measurement. So what's the theoretical measured value? 211. What's the correct value? 199. What's the error in measurement? Well, if I was writing this as an equation, I would go with the absolute value of 211 minus 199. Or I already heard somebody do the math in their head. Thank you. I heard somebody say, I think it's 12. So this radar gun for this measurement is off by 12 kilometers per hour. That doesn't mean that it's always off by 12 kilometers per hour. It might mean that it'll depend on how fast you're going. We would love to convert this into a percentage. So to convert this into a percentage percent error, that's going to be that 12 divided by the value that I know is correct. Which value do I know is correct, Josh? And then times 100 to make it a percent. This radar gun is off by 6%. 
By the way, technically, I should probably go to two sig figs because the 12 is two sig figs. The 199 is three sig figs, although we did some subtracting up here. Oh, but wait a minute. These are all to the same number of decimal places, so I wouldn't really have to worry about my adding and subtracting rule. So technically, I would go 6.0. I'll do that here just to be a pedantic nerd. I'll go to two sig figs, but I wouldn't be that fussy in real life. 6.0%. I would love to get my hands on the specs for radar guns and radar cameras because I don't think they're as accurate as the law enforcement officials would have me believe. But haven't been able to find that yet. Uh, two people, Connor and Sheila, measure their mass in, or weight in the morning by using typical bathroom scales. The ones that you stand on, bathroom scales are notoriously unreliable. They're very, very bad. The scale reports that Connor weighs 137 pounds, but we actually know that he weighs 256 pounds. Sheila's scale reports her weight as 117 pounds, but actually she weighs 129 pounds. Whose measurement incurred the larger error? I think we're going to find the error in Connor's. I think we're going to find the error in Sheila's and compare them. I told you that the other day I'm lazy but organized. I think we're going to be doing three things, finding Connor's error, finding Sheila's error, and then comparing them. So I'm going to go yoink, yoink. What do you think the capital letter C stands for, Tito? What do you think capital letter S stands for? Come up with a way to a brief, but be organized. And so you're often going to see I'm either going to use the first letter or I'll use the letter as a subscript. I'll put it underneath the variable. X with a C would be Connor's mystery value. X with an S would be Sheila's mystery value. We're going to get organized, but we're going to be lazy. Well, the two measurements I have for Connor are those two. Now, if I went theoretical value minus actual value, I would do that, but I would get a negative answer. So I'm going to put the absolute value signs, but you on your calculator, Jack, can go 256 minus 37. Just flip it and you'll get the positive answer. What is the absolute value of 237 minus 256 or what is 256 minus 237? I can do that in my head. 19, I think. Double check me. Yeah. So Connor's scale is off by 19 kilograms. What about Sheila? Sorry? Pounds? Thank you. What's the abbreviation for pounds? Why LBS? That's kind of stupid. Uh, by the way, that's falling out of favor now that we've entered the digital age because all of your cell phones have a pound key. What's the pound key? And so you're starting to see them start to abbreviate that with pounds. The LBS, it comes from something in Britain, and I used to know the story, and it was interesting and kind of weird, but it's the imperial system, which you're going to find out is just a stupid system, which is why we went metric. Sheila. Well, the measured value is 117. The actual value is 129. I'll take the absolute value of that. Double check me, but I think it's 12. Yes. So whose scale had a larger error? Whose scale was off by more in pounds? Connor had larger error. Does that mean that Connor's scale is less accurate? Well, the problem is we really can't make a comparison of these two numbers because the original masses were also so different. The best way to compare them would be to convert both of these into percentages. And so who has a bigger percentage error? We'll do the same thing. We'll divide our page into three. Tito, what does the capital letter C stand for? What does the capital letter S stand for? Now I'm going to do a percentage error. So the percentage error is going to be 19 divided by the correct value. Is the correct value 236 or 250, sorry, 237 or 256? 
and then times 100 to make it a percentage. 19 divided by 256 times 100. I heard somebody say 7%. Uh, the 19 is two sig figs. I'll go to two sig figs. I'll go 7.4%. Compare that to Sheila's, whose is 12 divided by, is the correct one 129 pounds? Yeah, it is. Times 100. Nine point three. So it turns out even though Sheila's scale had a smaller numerical error, its percentage error is, is larger. It's a less accurate scale. Sheila. Scale has a greater percentage error. So how do you find error? bigger minus smaller, and then to turn it into a percent, divide that answer by the value that you know is correct, and then times 100 to turn it into a percentage. Mr. Duick estimates that it will cost him $7,650 to rebuild his porch. When he actually rebuilds his porch, it costs him $9,800. What was his error? On your calculator, you could just type 9,800 minus 7,650. I can do that in my head. 1150? Double check me. 1150? 1,150, I think. Yes? No? 2,000. Oh, jeez. Carry a one, do it. 2,150. 2,150. I can't do it in my head, apparently. Wow. What is that as a percent? 2,150 divided by 9,800. Governments are notoriously bad with percentage error at guessing how much it will cost to build something. If you look at the Golden Years Bridge history, for example, the original estimate was nowhere near close to the actual final cost. They're often off by 100%. You get uh, 21.9. I'll go 22. Is that okay? I'll get a couple of examples with you. That's the lesson, but we're actually going to apply this. So bear with me. I'm going to pause the video. I got